Well, don't you know, Sharpen AI has a new update. This is version 3.2, updated AI models, improved masking, better raw color processing, and more. And guess what else? It's on sale right now. Let's take a first look at it. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Sharpen AI version 3.2, an all-new update. And it's on sale. And if you click on my affiliate link in the uh, description below and use my promo code David Kelly, that's all one word, David Kelly at checkout. If you don't own Sharpen AI yet, you can get it at an additional 15% off. And it's on sale for $59.99 right now, up till August 20th, 2021. And also, if you uh, just need to re, uh, renew your license, you can do that too and save an additional 15% with my coupon code. Just want to let you know that. And if you already own Sharpen AI and you have a valid updated license, you can go ahead and get this new update. Just go ahead and download it. Before we take a first look, let's get a glance at this web page here and see what the new improvements are. So we have major improvements to existing AI models, motion blur, very blurry version two now covers 1.5 times more motion blur and too soft, very blurry version two further reduces artifacts. So that's good news. There's usability improvements to in-app masking. There's improved color and tone processing for raw and DNG files. And there's uh, performance and UI improvements. Numerous bug fixes and usability improvements for an even better user experience. Now let's go ahead and take a first look. I'm gonna start out in uh, Photoshop today just to show you the new update. Now I've already duplicated my background layer. Now this uh, particular butterfly, he's a little bit on the soft side. Let me zoom in so you can see. See, he's a little bit soft and I like to add some sharpness to him, but I don't want any sharpness anywhere else. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and launch Sharpen AI and let's check out this new update. So I'm gonna come up here to Filter, Topaz Labs, Sharpen AI, and we will get started. Here's what the new update looks like. Now everything looks the same, but the difference is gonna be under Motion Blur, the very blurry model, and under Too Soft, the very blurry models have been improved. I'm using the side-by-side -side view. Now I have tons of videos on Sharpen AI, so if you don't know how to use Sharpen AI, you can go back and watch some of those videos on my YouTube channel. By the way, I'm zoomed into 200%, but if you go up here, you can zoom to fit. You can change the different zoom levels here, but 200% is good for this. But if you look at the image on the left, that's the original. The image on the right is the sharpened version. For image quality, I'm set to auto, so Sharpen AI will pick the model it thinks I need. Now, I like to go through and check the different models out, but there's the too soft, and I think that looks good. Because again, when you compare the image on the left to the image on the right, the image on the right really is improved. And now let's try the out of focus model and see what we get. Takes it a second or two for it to update itself here. Okay, I don't see much difference there. Now let's go to the motion blur and see what kind of result we get. And I'm set to auto, so that means that my settings will be automatically set for me. And I find that nine times out of 10, it's the perfect setting. It, it picks the uh, remove blur and suppress noise that it thinks that your image needs. And the motion blur looks pretty good on this one. So let's compare the motion blur to the too soft. Well, the motion blur definitely looked better, but let's check this out. Let's try out this new updated uh, model called very blurry under too soft. So Sharpen AI said I needed the too soft model. Let's try very blurry and see what kind of result we get. And yeah, that looks really good. Check that out. I like that. Now, let's compare that with the motion blur. So there's the motion blur. There's the too soft with very blurry. And I'm gonna go with that. I think that looks good. Now, let's also try motion blur with the very blurry and see what kind of result we get. It's always good to check and test all these things out. Takes it a second or two to update. Yeah, that's way too much. Now, don't forget you have these uh, adjustments here. So like the remove blur, I could pull this back a little bit if I felt I needed it. If it was too strong, and it'll update itself again. And that actually looks pretty good. But I think I'm going to go ahead and choose the too soft because I thought I needed that. And what if I need a little extra sharpening? Let's try that. Just a little wee bit. Yeah, just a tiny wee bit. Now let's go ahead and change this to zoom to fit. 
Now, when you click on Zoom to Fit, it says large preview size warning. Using Fit View on large images may introduce slowdown when updating updating the preview. Now, depending on your computer, it could really slow things down. Now, I want to have a single view here. But on my computer, it seems to do okay. So let me, uh, I'm at Zoom to Fit. Let's come into 50%. No, not 50%, Dave. How about 100%? There we go. I think it looks really good just the way it is. Everything is really nicely sharpened. The butterfly, even the flowers are a little sharper. Now, here's a little tip. If you left click with your mouse and hold it down, you'll see a before. So you can see everything looks a little on the soft side. And when I release the mouse, here's the after. Now, I love the butterfly, but I think I want this flower to not get any sharper because I want all the attention to be drawn to this butterfly. So again, here's the before. And here's the after. So let's use some masking to mask the effect, the sharpening, only onto the butterfly. I believe this part of the interface has changed a little bit here. Uh, this is where you click to selectively sharpen your image for masking, okay? And I think it used to say masking here, and this is different. So let's click this. And when we do, we get up the masking dialog, and here's our masking tool here. Now, there's been different improvements here with shortcuts and things like that. I'm not going to go into all that. I'm just going to show this to you. But we can come here and we can just add sharpening to a selected area, which for me is going to be the butterfly. Now we have shortcut keys like right bracket to make the brush small, larger, not smaller, left bracket to make it smaller. And I believe if you hold the shift key down and use the right bracket, you can adjust the softening of the brush and the left bracket will bring it in to make it harder on the edge. So you can adjust the softening when you hold the shift and use the bracket key. So bracket keys by themselves just make the brush larger or smaller. But let's go ahead and make the brush a little bit larger. And let me just, let's turn the edge aware on. This edge aware technology is nice. Now you can also change the size of the brush, the spread, change the distant edge aware looks for edges. And then of course you also have an opacity adjustment. I'll make my brush a little bit smaller and let's just paint around the edge here. I'm going to go fast here because, you know, it is a tutorial, but take your time and get it right. So pay attention to details and, you know, you don't want any sloppy edges on things. It's important that you get it right. One thing I didn't do is you can do a thing called uh, find objects. Let's do that. Let me click on find objects. I forgot about that. And it says, hey, we have a bird here. Well, I definitely don't have a bird, so we won't use that. Sometimes it works really well, but in this case, it thinks it's a bird, so forget that. But if it finds the object, it'll, it'll, it'll just mask it for you. It's not 100% perfect. I'm going to make my brush really small and just paint up on these. I'm going to call them legs. I know somebody's going to say, Dave, those aren't legs. Those are something else. I don't know what this thing is called. If anybody knows what these things are called, let me know. And I'm going to call this an antenna. So I'm going to come out here and paint on it. Got that. This part of the antenna is out of focus, so I'm not going to worry about that. So I think that's good enough. And what I'm going to do now is click Apply Mask. And now it applies that mask. Now it's only on the butterfly. <laughs> Isn't that cool? It looks really great. Before I send this back to Photoshop, I want to take note over here in the bottom left-hand corner, it says Plugin Image, because this image came from Photoshop as a plugin. And the icon down here for masking is now blue, letting me know that I've added a mask to my image. And you can add grain to your image if you think you need it, but generally I never use that. So I think I'm all set to go. I like my butterfly. I didn't want to have any uh, extra sharpening on the flower because I want all the attention to be drawn to the butter butterfly, which it is now. So all I need to do is click apply. And in real time, I'll let to send us right back into Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop. Well, that was really quick. I can't say it's faster than the last version, but it's definitely not slower. So let me go ahead and zoom in so we can really see. Now, here is the before and here is the after. But just like that, this was a TIFF file that I add sharpening to and I'm really happy with it. Well, there you go, everyone. That was the uh, first look at the new version of... Uh, Topaz Sharpen AI version 3.2. And don't forget, you can click on my affiliate link in the description below and pick that up and save an additional 15% off. And there's also a, um, 
uh, image quality bundle, I believe it is, where there's a nice savings when you get uh, Gigapixel Sharpen AI and Topaz Denoise AI all together. You get a nice savings there, but plus you'll get an additional 15% off with my promo code David Kelly at checkout. So that's nice. I hope you enjoyed this uh, first look today. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.